Hello, in this video I will talk about how you can create NumPy arrays in different ways. So first um, we are looking at this arrange function and arrange basically works just as range um, from normal Python um, yeah but it just creates a NumPy array and not a generator as range. So range with the parameter 9 creates the numbers from 0 to 8 and again this parameter is exclusive so the stop is exclusive. Now we can also pass um, multiple arguments, so for example start, stop and step, um, where start is the value the range starts from, stop is where it ends and step is just um, the step size of the different values. So yeah, as you can see this also works. Then uh, one very nice function is linspace, and linspace will um, create also an array, um, but this time it will create as many numbers as we, as we ask it to. So in this case we ask uh, for nine numbers, we say num equals nine, and uh, we can also specify how these numbers are. So here we say it, they go from minus five to five, and um, then what NumPy does is it linearly interpolates between these uh, start and stop values and uh, outputs these nine numbers that we asked for. And here you can see it starts with minus five and it's, it ends at five, so this five is not exclusive and um, this basically wouldn't really work to make this exclusive because um, I mean what is like the stop then so if you want to create that many numbers um, where do you end that would be the question so you basically have to have an inclusive stop and um, yeah so this creates the numbers between minus five and five all right then next up next up we have the function zeros and this will just create um, yeah, an array with zeros, initialized with the zero. Um, this five here tells the, uh, the array the shape. So this will create um, five zeros in a NumPy array. We could also um, pass the dtype. So if we say dtype equals int, for example, it would create float, uh, it would create integers. But by default, uh, this will create a float array. Um, yeah. Um, here we pass just one number as the shape. We can also pass a tuple, and if we pass a tuple, then it will just create a multi-dimensional array um, of zeros. As you can see here, this is three-dimensional. Um, yeah, works as expected, I guess. Then um, analogously to zeros, there's also ones, which just creates um, yeah an array initialized with ones. Uh, there's also empty. And empty does the same as ones or zeros, but it doesn't initialize them. So if we execute this, um, now it will have ones inside, but this is just because um, it took whatever was in memory at that position. So it creates a new array with these dimensions, and um, it doesn't initialize anything, it just takes whatever values were in the memory from any previous program. So this might be random values, um, from any other program that might be running on your machine. But in this case, it's probably just the same as this um, because we didn't save this anywhere, but this was just created in memory and then discarded again. And um, yeah, this empty array was just created at the same position in memory. But uh, this empty initialization is faster than, for example, here the ones. Um, this is just because empty doesn't have to um, initialize all the values, so it doesn't have to set all the values inside the array, um, but usually this doesn't really matter at all, and it's preferred to use zeros or ones over empty, um, because it just is more defined what's gonna happen. So with empties, you never know what values are really in there, and it I guess it only makes sense if you have really time-critical code that should run, and um, you know that you will initialize all the fields in the array anyways, but, I mean, if you have code that has to run really fast and very efficiently, probably Python is not your go-to language. So, yeah. Um, but as you can see here, the empty um, array creation for 100,000 elements took uh, 0.15 microseconds, and the same call with ones took 58 microseconds. So, yeah, um, the ones call took quite a bit longer, but again, yeah, this, these are microseconds, so it doesn't really matter. Then we also have the full function, and full will also work um, as ones or um, 
the zeros function. But here we have to specify the fill value. And um, here, for example, we say 42, and then all of the elements in the array have the value 42. And now as an exercise, um, if you want to, you can pause the video and figure out uh, what you would have to write to create a 3x3 three three array uh, with true values inside. So the, the, the d-type should be Boolean. Okay, and I will write down the solution now. So what we have to do is um, yeah, create an array and um, we can use numpy.1s for that. And it should have the shape 3x3, three three. so we pass a tuple with 3 and 3 as the shape. And then we have to say the d-type should be bool. And uh, now, as I've said in uh, previous lectures, Python is able to convert integers to bools. And um, a 1 will definitely be a true. And since we want trues in this array, uh, we can just use this. And this will give us a 3x3 three three array with trues in there. If we would have used zeros here, um, then it would be an array of false values. All right. Now, coming to random values, uh, we can also use NumPy to create random arrays. And this um, np.random is a submodule of NumPy, um, meaning that we can't call np.random directly, but we have to access the functions that are defined inside the submodule random of NumPy. So we have to call np.random and then dot a function. And in this case, we call just random, and random takes a shape and will just um, return an array of this shape um, with floating values between 0 and 1. And uh, here the 1 is exclusive, so it will only um, print, uh, it will only return arrays with values from 0 uh, up to 1, but not 1. Okay, and another random function that is uh, quite useful is the randint. And um, here we, ha we can uh, specify a start and a stop. And uh, here we say, uh, get us random values from 0 to 10, and then we pass the shape again, uh, which in this case is 5 by 5, and this creates us an integer array um, with values between 0 and 10 uh, of the shape 5 by 5. And you can also use this rand int to create uh, Boolean arrays, by the way. And um, yeah, if you just pass a dtype there and uh, set dtype to bool, it, it will create Boolean arrays. But um, be careful with that, because NumPy, in that case, doesn't convert um, anything else than zeros and ones. So if you um, create a random integer array uh, with values between 0 and 5, that will not work, because uh, NumPy does not convert anything um, larger than 1 to booleans. So that would raise an error, uh, saying that the high bound of um, the boolean function um, was passed. So, yeah, you have to um, use between 0 and 1. So, only 0 and 1 uh, if you want to create the Boolean random ints. Okay, and now another exercise. Um, this time, again, if you want to do this exercise, you can pause the video and um, try to figure it out. But I will also show you the solution here. And um, you should create a 5 by 5 array. And um, one fourth of the items should statistically be false and the others true. And it says statistically here uh, because we don't want you to actually count the values and make sure that it's exactly one fourth of them are false, but um, it can just be uh, around one fourth of them false. So you don't really have to ensure that it's one fourth. And as a tip, you can use the S type function that you can call in, on an array and then you pass a new data type and NumPy will automatically convert um, this array to whatever is passed in, in this S type. All right, and then I'll write down the solution now. So we can use this um, np.random.randint function, as I said before. And then if we um, say we want values between zero and four, this will give us um, values actually between, uh, so it will can generate values uh, 0, 1, and 2, uh, and 3. Not 4, because the 4 is, ex is exclusive again. Um, but this should be enough, because we want four different choices. And um, yeah, we have to pass the shape as well. So we want a 5 by 5 array. And if we execute this, this will give us integers. But now we want to have booleans. 
and here the s type function comes into play because here we can call s type bool and this will convert every zero to um, a false and everything else to true so statistically every fourth element uh, should be a false here and the others are, uh, are true all right now we can also uh, repeat values using numpy and we can uh, do that with scalars. Uh, so for example, three here, we can also do that with arrays. Um, I'll show you that. But first with a three, uh, so just a scalar value, uh, we call this np.repeat and the first value is what gets repeated and the second value uh, parameter is how often. So here, this will just create an array of five threes. Then, as I said, this also works with uh, arrays and um, here, one, two, three, four, as a two-dimensional array will be repeated two times, but this repeat function itself um, will flatten the array first, meaning that it will make a one-dimensional array of whatever you passed into that, and then uh, repeat the elements. Uh, so yeah, we first get uh, two ones, then two twos, and so on, because it will just go through here, uh, through this array, and um, yeah, repeat the, all the numbers twice. If you want a different way of repeating the values, um, NumPy also has the tile function. And here you can see the difference between repeat and tile. Um, so repeat will take um, the first value and repeat it as many times as you specify, then it will take the second one and repeat that again. Whereas the tile function will take the whole thing you put in and repeat that just multiple times. So here we uh, say repeat or tile one, two, three, three times. And this will create one to three, one to three, one to three. So yeah, those are two useful functions for um, repeating values um, or repeating arrays in NumPy. Then a very important function is reshape. Um, reshape allows you to um, modify the shape of an array. And um, this is very useful for many applications. And whenever you deal with some data you probably want to reshape it at some point to just allow to uh, do some calculation with that and um, in this example we first create um, an array with a range and it's just the values between 2 and 14 so it's a one-dimensional array and then we call a dot reshape and we pass two numbers and these two numbers um, this could be arbitrary many arbitrarily many um, but this will tell python um, how many dimensions uh, there should be and how many values sh there should be in every dimension. So this will reshape the array um, as a two-dimensional array with three rows and four columns. And here you can see um, it just uses the first four values and puts them in the first row and then the second four values and puts them in the second row and so on. But if you don't want to specify all the numbers here, so you don't want to specify every dimension, um, which you would have to calculate yourself if you don't know the dimension of an array beforehand. For example, if you, um, I don't know, have experiments and you don't know how many experiments there are right now, um, or so how many samples there are right now, you could also just use a minus one here. So um, the minus one will figure out itself how many uh, how many values there should be and in this case um, it will know that there will be um, yeah I guess one two three four five six six different rows and uh, two columns um, yeah but this minus one only works if you specify um, all the other dimensions so you have to specify all the dimensions but one uh, it can only figure out one other so it wouldn't work if we say minus one minus one um, that wouldn't work because Python doesn't know which dimensions it should do because there are multiple options. All right, and now um, we have an example. And in the example, we would like to create a 2D array uh, where each row is 1, 2, 3, and there should be 10 rows of that. And I will show you two different ways to do that. Um, the first way would be to use np.repeat um, and then using an A range from one to four um, and we want to repeat that 10 times. So this will already create us um, the array with the values of one to three and uh, all of them 10 times, but this is not in the right shape yet. 
So what we have to do here is we have to reshape it. And um, we probably want to reshape it in a way that um, we have these one, two, three values as one, um, yeah, as one part already. And um, for that, in this case, if we would say 10 rows and then figure out the rest, um, this is not correct yet because it will just create um, one, 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 and then um, after that, a block of twos and so on. But what we can do is um, let it figure out this first um, dimension and then tell it 10 columns. And this um, way it will already create the correct structure. So we have columns of one, two, three, but it's not in the right, completely right shape yet. So we want to have rows of one, one two, three and not columns. And um, yeah, for that, we can just transpose the matrix and this will uh, yeah, just turn the columns into rows and um, make the shape as we want it to be. Then the other option there is to use uh, is to use tile. And um, it's very similar to repeat, but here we um, I do the same thing. Basically, we also repeat this range um, 10 times and this will get us this. So we have uh, one, two, three repeated 10 times. Um, and then we only need to reshape this. And uh, this time we can say, um, create 10 rows and then figure out how many columns. And this will already work and we get what we wanted. So these are two ways to achieve this, for example, uh, with the methods I have showed so far. All right, then um, one thing on comparing arrays, it's sometimes a little difficult to compare the values in arrays. And um, in this example here, we've created two arrays. Um, they're both three by three matrices. And the first one, uh, so they're both initialized with the zeros. And then in the first one, we changed the value of zero, zero. So the top left value here, um, we added this epsilon value, which is just a very small number. And um, as you can see here, it set this value to one times 10 to the minus 12. So it's just a very small number and B is just a bunch of zeros still. And uh, we can use this equals equals operator to compare these two. And if we do this, it will correctly tell us that the first one is false since we changed that one and uh, the others are true. So the others are equal, they're all zeros. And um, yeah, now if we want to check if, um, if all of the um, values are true, so if every element of the two matrices is the same, we can use this equals equals and then call in all on the result. So we have to add the parentheses here because otherwise it would just call all on B, but we want to call it on the result of this evaluation. And then what all will do is um, check if every element in the matrix or in the array that we have here is true. And in this case, this is false because we have one false here. Um, all right, and then this is not the best way to do this. And I will show you why. It has a flaw. And the flaw is, for example, that um, if we have two arrays and one of them is empty and the other one has one element and we try to do this equals equals all and um, to try to check if all the values are the same, this will actually give us true. And um, technically this is not correct because we're comparing an empty array to an array with one element and intuitively this shouldn't be true so this should never be true because they don't have the same shape first of all and also um, this one yeah, has, an, has a different value than uh, this one because this one doesn't have any values at all but still this gives us true um, yeah and then this is kind of a problem which is not always important but um, in some cases, this could lead to some, some bad errors, um, which are difficult to detect. And uh, because of that, NumPy has added their own functions. And uh, to compare two arrays, for example, um, the array equal function was added. And to the array equal, you just pass two arrays. And here we use A and B from above again. And um, this will basically do this um, equals equals and all it will do something similar, but it will also check if the um, if this problem has occurred. So if we say 
um, array equals C and D. This is false. Um, although here it said it's true and actually it should be false. So this output of array equal is better than the equals equals all method. Then we can also check for our A and B um, if the values are close. So close is defined by NumPy internally. They also have an epsilon value defined and close will just check um, if all of the values are reasonably similar. And in our case, this is true because we've defined our epsilon, which we added to A um, as very small. And such a small number is considered as maybe just an imprecise floating point value. And uh, therefore, this all close returns true. And then we also have this is close function and is close will just return us a Boolean array um, for every element of the two arrays that we put in. And it will tell us if the two values are close or not.